Now we've seen a little bit about working with tables and we've discussed how that's an older method of dealing with layout. Now before we actually get into some concrete examples of how to achieve layout ourselves by using CSS and more specifically by using something called an ID which we haven't seen as yet so we'll get to that eventually but right now we are familiar with things like classes so I just want to talk to you a little bit about working with different types of positioning for example I'm going to come over here and I'm gonna just write out the word absolute me and we're going to select this object and format it as a paragraph. All right, so, you know, very simply, we've got our paragraph, nothing fancy in here. And let's go about creating a very simple custom class, one that will actually go about creating the absolute positioning that we want to achieve. And I'll tell you a little bit more about what that is. First, let's go to the View menu, and let's turn on our rulers if you don't already have them showing. So as you can see, the top left-hand corner of my design view, let's just go to the design view, is represented as 0, 0, 0 on the x-axis and 0 on the y-axis. And you'll notice that as things increase on the, uh, well, actually, this might look like decreasing if you're familiar with high school algebra. But um, at this point, it's really quite simply something that, you know, will go down and it will increase the value or the number of that particular amount. So if I were to say here back in the split screen view, if I wanted to have this object, you'll notice that by default there's a little bit of you know padding inside this body tag so it's pushing it off. But as we can see here that's the default positioning for this particular you know paragraph. If I wanted to I could create a new CSS rule and we'll put it in this document only. Again, something I would never recommend you do in any other circumstance. This is just to explain a very simple little effect here. So I'll make a custom class and I'll call it absolute. And what I'm going to do is go to positioning and say absolute positioning. There we go. And here in the placement area, you could say, you know, move it so much from the top, so much from the right. But look, if I were to just by default say zero top, zero on the left, and click OK, now we would have to select this element, and we would have to apply the absolute class to it. And check it out. Now it's sort of being determined by this box here, as you can see. And you could even move this. Now this is actually really quite cool. If you were to select this, and as you can see here, I've got left positioning, top positioning, and look what happens. Once you have this defined, in Dreamweaver, you can just go around moving your object and positioning it where you want to. Now that might seem amazingly cool and like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I was waiting for. That's one way that you can work with positioning, but it's oftentimes doesn't really give you the best results. So as you'll see, there's sort of like a mix of relative and um, as opposed to absolute positioning where you could use relative positioning to work with your pages and something called float based designs. Now we're going to be doing an amazing look at, we're going to be taking an amazingly long look at working with float based positioning because I'm going to show you how to do a two column and a three column fixed or liquid based layout. And as you'll see, uh, that will be described in full detail a little bit later. But this is what absolute means. Okay, also let's take note of something else. If I were to, say, exit that paragraph, as you can see here, and create another paragraph, and, you know, just to say, um, relative me. And if I was to do that, you'll notice that, number one, even though the absolute appears before it in the code view, what's happening inside of our view over here? Well, relative comes first, absolute comes second, because I'm absolutely positioning it somewhere on this page, right? So, as you can see, I could even put it on top, which is kind of gross. But nevertheless, it gives you an idea of what it's doing. It's removing it from the regular flow of things, right? So the regular flow of things here, it says relative, and, you know, I could have yet another paragraph and another paragraph, and you'll see them all here in the code. But absolute is supposed to be the first one, but it's removed. It's almost like you just popped it out of the regular flow of the HTML environment. All right, well, let's say 
relative me is something that I want to do by creating another class called relative. And relative just basically means, well, look, right now it's positioned in a specific spot. I'm going to go to positioning. I'm going to say relative. And I'm going to say relative to where it should be right now, I want you to push it down maybe 20 pixels, or let's make it really noticeable, 200 pixels. And I want you to push it over the left-hand side from where it's supposed to be right now, another 200 pixels as well. So if I click OK, if I select this relative me text that we have here and then I apply the class in here called relative me look what happened to this one relative to where it was supposed to be which was right around here it's now been moved 200 pixels down from the top and you could see it there relative to where it's supposed to be and 200 pixels over again relative to where it's supposed to be so it's as you can see it's got the default so that's how relative positioning works so when you come back we're going to be discussing a little bit more about working with float based designs and we'll take a look at how we should really go about creating our web pages and making them look much more stable and in a much better situation